Robert Plank Show Episode 106 Strengthen Your Faith While Building a Profitable Business with Tasha Scott. Hey everyone and welcome back to the Robert Plank Show. We're here with Tasha Scott and she has a new book that has ignited a movement, the Don't Limit Me movement. The movement challenges women who feel stuck living their lives on other people's terms to take action and stop self-limiting. So Tasha, welcome to the show. I'm excited to hear about uh, how everyone can become their best selves and kick some butt. Thank you, Robert. I'm excited to be here. So, I mean, tell me about yourself. Tell me about this don't limit me what makes you special sure sure well I tell people all the time that I have been an entrepreneur all my life <laughs> literally it feels like because my first business was a paper route when I was in the eighth grade fast forward after just going through life growing up I ended up enrolling in court reporting school and learning how to be a court reporter and that's literally where my business was born right after I graduated from court reporting school and in this journey, Robert, I was married. Um, the first year of business was really good. In fact, I hit six figures my first year as a court reporter. And what, I, what people didn't know, though, is that in the midst of business looking really good, my personal life was a mess. There was a huge disconnect between what looked like a public success and a private failure. And there was a lot of lessons that I learned that year because one, I didn't have a plan for the growth of the business. All I knew was that I had a dream to be an entrepreneur. I had my goals and my vision and I was like ready to go. And I accomplished everything that I wanted to do that first year, but I felt empty because of all of the turmoil that was happening at home in the form of marriage problems, financial problems, insecurity, all of those things that you would have thought money would have been the solution, but it wasn't. And so one of the things that I did, Robert, is I reached out for help. And for me, help came in the form of a life coach. And this life coach, when I reached out to her, she literally took me um, for six months. We had sessions over the phone. We met every other week. And what I found out was that I was hiding behind a mask. I knew how to perform. I knew how to function, but I didn't know how to live. And so that's why I had the huge disconnect. I didn't really know Tasha outside of the business, outside of the role. And so what she did is she literally just walked with me and helped me to face some fears. And some of those fears that even stem from childhood, um, fear of rejection, fear of failure, fear of success, all of those things we had to walk through. And I had to learn to take responsibility for me. I had to get out of victim mode and stop thinking that it was everybody else's fault, why I wasn't happy, why I was miserable, all those things, including my husband. And she really helped me to get my want to back from life because when I faced my fears, I realized that it wasn't as bad as it seemed. It literally just meant me owning it. It took me owning it, facing it, and moving forward. And what happened, and I'm giving you the 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 Reader's Digest version, <laughs> but what happened was, as I started owning my owning my stuff, basically facing my fears, I started gaining confidence again. I started taking responsibility. I started to get to know Tasha, and literally, what happened is, as a result of my journaling, that's where my book was born. The Don't Limit Me book is because one day I looked myself in the mirror, Robert, and I said, Tasha, don't limit me because I realized for the first time I was the only one holding me back. I had some good opportunities ahead, but I was self-sabotaging. And, and so for the first time I said, no, don't limit me, Tasha. And with the help of this life coach, my life started turning around. In fact, my marriage was restored. My business started growing because it was growing under a healthier leadership, which was me. I mean, I, I love all that about that story, especially because what you usually hear is like someone's struggling, someone's struggling, they don't quite make it. It sounds like you 
you jumped ahead pretty quickly, but then it kind of turned into what's that saying? Like money makes you more of what you are. So it's like, you, like we all, we always think that having a bunch of money, like you said, is the key to all the problems. It'll fix everything. But then you get to that point, and it's almost like a combination of now what, and then all these yeah. other problems that were just you know really tiny now are ten times, twenty times the size. And now what the heck am I gonna do about it? That's right. That's right. What happened in my case is the money that I was making, the business growth really exposed my fears more than anything. And it and it um, and it was like because of the fear of success, I was afraid. Can I really handle this? I mean, that makes a lot of sense. And and speaking along those lines about like, you know, the, the fear, fear, fear of success. One thing that I like that uh, you mentioned a couple of minutes ago was about you owning your problems. And I think that um, right. I think that, that I struggle with that a lot of, many times and I have to kind of remind myself too that, okay, like if if things aren't ideal with like, you know, with, uh, with a partner or with a job or with whatever kind of relationship, I mean, it's, right. re- it's really easy, almost natural to blame the other person, right? But then you th- oh, think, yeah. but then I think like, well, whatever economic situation, whatever relationship, like I put myself there and That's right. I'm choosing to, to keep myself there. So, I mean, could you talk a little bit about that, about kind of like how you overcame the the blaming and the self-sabotage and becoming more aware and stuff like that? Oh, absolutely. And you're talking to somebody who was who is a recovering victim. <laughs> I like that term. You know, um, yeah, because it was it was all my husband's fault. The reason why our marriage couldn't get together, the reason why I was it was my parents' fault. It was my friends' fault because because they didn't understand me. Everybody was the blame. And then this coach, she's the one who called me out. You know, and and I told her, I said, I don't know why people always think that I have it all together and da 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 da. And she said, Well, Tasha, have you told them any different? You know, and what she did is she put the mirror in front of me and she said, I hear what you're saying, and this is what she was saying in so many words, but let's talk about you. What's what's part of you playing in all of this? And it, it and here's what she said, even if they are wrong, why are you putting up with it? Because you do have a choice. Oh yeah, and, you know, and like, and, uh, like what what you allow is will will continue. That's right. That's right. And she used a great illustration. She said, "Imagine I'm sitting across from you, and I'm kicking your leg, and you might say, don't please don't do that.'" And I say, "Well, I want to," and 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 you keep kicking my leg, and the only and and I say, "Please stop," and you say, "No, this is fun." Well, the only way it's going to stop and if you because you're persisting is if I get up and walk away. Oh yeah, or you could or you could kick back, right? That's true. That's true. Yes. That's true. So it it sounds like a lot of what helped you is that you had this this coach like this neutral third party to kind of call you on your on your stuff mm-hmm. and then also to kind of when we needed a wake up call someone who like, you know, who wasn't someone who had their own agenda, who wasn't someone who was trying to help themselves or hurt you, just someone who said, okay, well, I'm, I'm seeing everything that you're, you're doing here, Tasha, and here's, here's what I'm seeing based on your actions, and here's what I think needs to change as far as the direction you're going. That's right on, Robert, because I, I specifically said I need somebody who has no emotional connections to me, to my husband, to my community. In fact, my life coach was somebody, she's in Pennsylvania. I'm in Alabama, and we spoke by phone, and so there was no there was no reason for me to lie or be dishonest or try to filter anything. She basically was like, she was a stranger and for some reason it it was easier for me to unleash and allow her to help me um without taking sides or anything like that and i like that and i like that what you just mentioned is that the lying stopped because i think that it's really Mm -hmm. easy to, to fall into the habit of just having a few lies here and there and you like lie a little bit to get ahead or you Mm -hmm. you lie to yourself about well I'm going to get all these things accomplished today and then and then before you know it it's like there's so so much little tidbits of lying happening that you almost don't take yourself seriously that's right that's right it's it it's pretty scary when you can't even live with you anymore (laughs) <laughs> right. That's a miserable place to be, and that's why I reached out for help because I was at a point of desperation. 
So anyone else who's at, at kind of this point of desperation other than, uh, you know, getting a life coach, I mean, what else, what's like the, the second thing someone could do to kind of get out of that hole? Journaling was a big, big thing for me because I always say my journaling was my no judgment zone. And sometimes it's easier to express yourself in writing because when you're writing it out, you're writing out those thoughts that you're afraid to speak out of your mouth. And so journaling was a really huge thing for me. And also I'm a person of faith, uh, but ironically in that time period, I was I would say I was even mad at God, you know? So I would say, honestly, what really triggered everything for me was having the life coach and the journaling. Those were the two big factors because she even helped me to deal with unresolved anger issues. So you're saying that she uncovered things that you didn't even know you had. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And she challenged me in a very gentle, non-judgmental way. Whoa, was there a thunderstorm there? It is. It just started raining like crazy. <laughs> oh man! So and, it, and it's perfect timing because that's kind of like where the you know the the thunderstorm and you're talking about all the turmoil <laughs> and all the you know problems you've been through. But that, I mean, eventually the storm is always clear, right? That's right. There's always sunshine after the rain. <laughs> yeah. When, once all the stuff gets cleaned out, which is a necessary process sometimes. And I mean, I, I'm glad that you uh, you brought up and kind of reminded me of journaling because that's one of those things where it's like. I know I should do it and probably, I don't know, once every one or two months I'll go and fish it out of the drawer and I'll just, you know, I'll just write just a couple of sentences or two and, and especially that comes in handy, especially like if I'm, if I'm feeling like really stuck or just like that to that, that hopeless point of despair, like I've just yeah. been, been getting too stressed out and it seems so simple but it's, it's so crazy how just putting it into, into a few words about like what I'm feeling, That's what right. I'm afraid of, what I want. Just, I mean, right. just putting that down, I mean, it, it's magical. I can't believe how simple and yet how effective that is. That's right. That's right. And she taught me um, how to stop stuffing my issues. In other words, when, when things were happening, starting to face them as they were happening, because my problem was I would go and hide my head in the sand and not face my real issues, but that only made things worse. So she taught me how to speak up, how to confront without being, without being disrespectful to yourself or to other people, how to set proper boundaries. She taught me the power of saying no, you know, um, because I was a people pleaser. And that's a bad combination when you're in business and you're a people pleaser. That's a disaster waiting to happen. Oh, yeah, because you, then you get too many commitments, spread too thin, all that stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So could you unpack that a little bit about just like how to how to be more of a confronter, how to be more assertive, how to uh, set those boundaries and say no less? Sure, sure. Um, I'll start with within the confines of a relationship, like I'll use my husband and I, for example. Um, so what I did was I started having to learn how to communicate without without getting emotional and all this stuff because it was like a dance. Like we were starting to be so predictable with each other. I would say something and he would think I was attacking and all this. So I learned how to communicate truth in a respectful way. In other words, if he said something that hurt my feelings, I can say that hurt my feelings without attacking him and him feeling like he's the most awful person in the world, you know. <laughs> things like that, That's, that was in the confines of the marriage relationship. But then when it came to clients, you know, I had to learn that, especially in what I'm doing as a coach, that I am not somebody's savior, you know? And she taught me that by example, like she could listen to me and she could be that, that um, voice of reason. But at the end of the day, the responsibility and the choice was mine to make, you know? And so, I, and, and a lot of it, what I can even, if I had to put it in a word, was codependency. I had to stop making other people's problems my problems, but still give people permission to be themselves too and not be judgmental or, you know, all those different things. I like that thinking. I like all of that. Well, mm -hmm. well, cool. So, um, so as far as like somebody, somebody trying to get their life together or trying to mm -hmm. trying to up their game or any of those kinds of things like aside from what we talked about like what's a huge mistake that 
you see these people making over and over when they're trying to be either have better relationships or be more assertive. I mean, what's just the the common mistake no matter like what they what they've read or what they've heard, what do what do people keep doing that just annoys the heck out of you? <laughs> Um, there's two extremes. One extreme is you go all the way quiet and you just withdraw. And what I call that is suffering in silence, where you just try, you try to cope and, and use all the muster up all the willpower you can to deal with it. And and we, we were not made to be islands. You know, we were made for connection with other people. So that's one extreme is withdrawing all the way to where you think nobody will get me, nobody will understand me. The other extreme is talking to every and anybody thinking that they're going to just rescue you from this situation. So I would say the mistakes is both is both extremes. And I mean and I would say that that I, I'm more of like the the quiet, like withdrawing kind of person, and then uh, both my parents, especially like my dad, was kind of the talk to anybody. But then I think the problem with with that was that he would just end up figuring out like what his like four or five problems were. And I guess it's good to like <laughs> to tell one person, but he would tell everybody, and he would just call the same like t- list of twenty people, and all day long just just you know bitch and moan about the same right. exact problems he had. And right. just get worked up every single time and not really get any kind of resolution there. Yeah, and all it does is cause confusion. So what's the answer if you're on one of those extremes? Find a safe place. And, and what I mean by that is like now I'm in a place where I have a support system. And my support system, I can count on one hand. And because I believe there's we, need, we all need people who know the real us, okay? So I have my coaches, but I also have accountability partners. I've got two ladies that I would say, these are my accountability partners that know the real talk. You know? um, and of course my husband, you know, I, I talk to him, but you know how it is sometimes, guys don't understand everything about a woman. <laughs> right, all we can do is listen pretty much. <laughs> yes, yes, so I have to have my girl time. <laughs> you I know. Hear but, but I would say have your support system, and it doesn't need to be a whole lot of people. And, and I like that thinking, and I think that, I mean, up until now, I hadn't really thought about in, that in those terms and that, you know, in our, in our personal life, we have, you know, like our partner, our friends, our family, we have people that we can bounce things off of. But in a, a lot of times in, you know, especially in like our own business, we don't have that kind of person and and so what you're saying is even if you know you don't have a partner in your own business things like that you can go and you know hire an accountability partner or hire uh Mm -hmm. just a coach in general to get you to where you're going to kind of to kind of set up that structure that's right that's right and even in addition to the coach you can have like some people call them like a business bestie like somebody that's a peer you know, that is success minded, like minded, like you are, that you can talk to in between the sessions of your coach. Ooh, I, I like that. Just to kind of have like a, a bounce, oh, what, what do they call it? Like a, a bouncing board or something to yes. just throw ideas off against. That's right. That's right. Because um, what I've found is that as I have that support system in place, it helps me when fear comes, when doubts and insecurity tries to come, I am able to process it now, which is not what I did in the past. In the past, I would just worry and meditate on all the negativity, and it was it was like toxin. And it seems like one of those things where, like, if, if it's left untreated, it just kind of grows and grows and takes you over, and then it's almost as if, if you would fix the problem early, it wouldn't have been such a big deal. But then because you let it sit and fester and everything else gets bad, then you have this huge problem to fix. That's exactly right. That's right. That's right. So I say everybody needs a support system. <laughs> Amen to that. I mean, that makes a lot of sense to me. So cool. So, I mean, a lot of a lot of great things uh, you share with us today, Tasha. I really like your story. I like the, uh, you know, all the core reporter stuff and how you kind of jumped to uh, this kind of like unexpected area where you had all this money and then kind of had to figure out how to figure out the rest of you. And it sounds like the number one thing you told people is to get a coach. Number two mm-hmm. thing is to uh, to kind of journal so you have that no judgment kind of zone and then uh, communicate without 
getting emotional. That way you can like share the truth about your own feelings so your, your stuff doesn't get ignored, uh, but you're also being uh, respectful. So if people want to find right. out more about you, your books, your products, your coaching, uh, where can they find out about you? Sure. My website is TashaMScott.com. And they can definitely find out a lot about me there. And one of the things that I vowed to do is because I got that kind of help, I decided to go and become a certified life coach myself so that I could be that safe place for others, especially women in business. Nice. And especially because you, you've gone through all the things that they're now probably going through. That's right. That's right. Awesome. So TashaMScott.com. Can't wait to check it out and see what's there. Yes. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Glad to have you on.